guys, today we're cooking low and slow. This is Spezzatino I'm going to be making, and it's from the Laura in the Kitchen cookbook, her new cookbook. If I can find this online, I will leave it linked, but her cookbook is always linked in my Shop My Book section in my Amazon store. So I've got some oil heating here, and I've got some beef that I've just got diced up into about one and a half inch pieces and they've already been floured and seasoned and I'm going to cook this in batches until they are nice and golden on each side. All right so I've got the second batch of beef coming out of the pan. Now they're not fully cooked yet. They're going to cook for a while so they'll get nice and tender. So I'm just going to remove these from the pan and re uh, remove some of this oil because we don't need all of this oil. All right, now I've got some vegetables going in. I've got carrots, celery, and onion. I'm just going to add that right in there. With some salt and pepper. And I'm going to cook these vegetables down for about five minutes or so until these vegetables are nice and tender. Now you can do this in a Dutch oven. I'm just going to use my um, brazier pot or my brazier pan today. But you can do this in a Dutch oven. So I'm just going to let these go and get tender and then we'll move on to the next step. And put this meat back in here and get it cooking low and slow. Okay, so these vegetables have cooked down and they're nice and tender. I'm going to go ahead and add all of the meat and the juices back into this pot here. As well as some beef stock. Now you, the recipe calls for red wine and beef stock. I don't have any red wine, so I'm just going to do beef stock. And I've got some parsley and some rosemary. So I'm just going to throw that in there. I'm going to give this a little stir to get everything nice and combined in those herbs down into that pot, into that liquid. And we're going to bring this up to a boil. Turn the heat down to a simmer. Cover it and let it cook for about two hours. And then we'll come in and remove the herbs. All right, you guys, this Spezzatino cooked for two and a half hours. It was absolutely delicious. That meat was fall apart tender. I served it over some polenta. I will try to find this recipe online and leave it linked below. If not, I'll find something similar. But Laura in the Kitchen's cookbook will be linked in my Shop My Book section down in the uh, description box down below. So you can check that out. All right, you guys, today I'm going for something super simple. I'm going to be making my Cajun shrimp. I've already got my rice on in the Instant Pot, and I've got some green beans here. They are done. So we're going to go ahead and start on the Cajun shrimp because it is not going to take very long at all. It's a very quick meal. So I've got my big brazier pot here. It's over medium-low heat. I'm going to add in a tablespoon of butter. And we're going to get this melting. I've got some garlic here. This is just a couple of cloves of garlic. I'm just going to add all of this in here. And we're going to get this smelling delicious. This is going to cook for about 30 seconds, just until you smell that garlic. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and add in some Worcestershire sauce. Some chicken broth. Hot sauce. Now if you want this a little bit more spicy, you can definitely add more. Or if you don't want it spicy at all, you can just leave it out going to add in some Cajun seasoning and some smoked paprika. 
we're going to let this cook just a couple of minutes, about one to two minutes. While that is heating up and getting to smell delicious, we're going to add in some lemon juice. You can do the juice of half of a lemon or you can do the juice of a whole lemon. That is really up to you. I'm going to do the juice of one whole lemon because this is a rather small lemon. Get that mixed all in there. Turn my heat back up slightly. And I've got some shrimp here. Typically I do uh, deveined and uh, peeled shrimp with the tail on. They didn't have any at the grocery store, so I just got peeled and deveined uh, the tail off. I'm just gonna add these right in here. And we're just gonna spread these out and toss them in that seasoning. And we're just gonna let this cook until these shrimp are pink and completely cooked through. It should take about three to four minutes depending on how high you have your heat. And then this will be done. All right, so this shrimp is completely cooked through. I'm going to go ahead and cut my heat off. And I'm just going to add in the remaining two tablespoons of butter. And it's gonna help thicken up this sauce just slightly. And you can add some more salt and pepper if you need to. So I'm just going to spread this out a little bit and I'm going to add some pepper and I've got some chopped parsley here. I'm just going to add a little bit of this right on top and this is done. So I'm going to go ahead and make my plate and I'll show you my plate. This Cajun shrimp is the reason why I always have shrimp on hand in my freezer. It is quick to throw together. It is delicious. It's filling and you can add any side to it that you want. Typically I will do like roasted broccoli or some green beans but you can serve it however you want and it's fully customizable to your heat preference. So this recipe is on my blog. I will leave it linked down in the description box for you guys so you can check that out as well. Okay guys, today is a very beautiful day outside and I want to make a pasta dish and eat some dinner outside on the porch. So we're going to make some pasta with yogurt, peas, and chili. It's a very super easy recipe. I've got some water boiling on the stove that I've already salted. I've got some pasta here. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this pasta on to cook and then we'll start on the sauce. All right, for the sauce, I've got some yogurt here. This is full fat Greek yogurt. And I'm just gonna add this into my food processor here. All right, so I've got that in there and I'm just gonna set this empty container to the side. It's about two and a half cups of yogurt. And I'm going to add about two thirds of a cup of frozen thawed peas into the food processor with the yogurt and I've got some olive oil here and I'm going to add probably about five to six tablespoons of olive oil. I've got some garlic here that I've just peeled and smashed. It's not mince, just good whack with a knife or back of a spoon and just chunk it in there and I'm just going to blitz this together until everything is nice and combined and smooth. All right, so this is done. I'm going to go ahead and take out my little blade here and scrape all of this sauce off. All right, and we're just going to put this in my little bowl here. This smells so delicious. I want to get all of this sauce out. So that is all in the bowl. 
Now all I'm going to do is add the remaining olive oil to a small little saucepan along with some pine nuts and some pepper flakes. And I'm just going to toast this up until the pine nuts are nice and golden brown. And then I'm going to remove them from the heat, set them to the side and let them cool while the pasta finishes up cooking. All right, so I've got my sauce and I've got the rest of my ingredients. I've got my cooked pasta right here. I've drained it and I've just got it uh, sitting here on a little pot holder. I've got my peas that I've soaked in some hot water. I'm going to drain them. I've got some salt and white pepper. You can do black pepper if you don't have white pepper. I've got some feta that I just got chunked up. And I've got my toasted pine nuts with the oil and peppers. So we're ready to assemble this. Oh, and I've got some basil here. I'm going to add a little bit of this pasta at a time. So that way my yogurt doesn't split. So I'm just going to add a little bit, give it a little mix, and then we'll add a little bit more. All right. So I've got all of my pasta mixed in, and this smells so delicious. I'm going to go ahead and add in my peas, my feta cheese chunks, all eight ounces. We're going to add some salt. Now add a little bit now. You can always add a little bit more later if you need it. And we're going to add some white pepper. Of course, if you don't have white pepper or can't find it, just add some good old black pepper in there. We're going to mix this up a little bit. And that sauce is going to get down into that pasta and it's just going to be so delicious. All right, so I've got my basil here and I've already washed it and I'm just going to tear it up and add it directly in here. You can chop it if you want to, but I'm just going to tear it. I love the smell of basil. It just smells like summertime. I love the smell of fresh herbs, especially mixed with lemon. So good. Okay, I'm just going to give this another little mix, get all of that basil in there combined with that sauce. I'm going to give this a little taste just to see if we need any more salt and pepper. That is so good. It doesn't need any more salt or pepper. So I'm just going to put some plastic wrap over the top of this, pop this in the fridge. For about 30 minutes until it's time to eat and then when it's time to eat you're going to ladle this into your bowl or spoon it into your bowl and top it with the pine nuts and oil and then that will be good to go and i'll show you my plate when it's done you guys i absolutely loved creating this recipe for you guys i did a ton of research this is a mediterranean style uh dinner it is so easy it's more of a israeli style dish but it is absolutely delicious this is up on my blog i will leave this link down in the description box for you guys and you can have this recipe if you have a smaller family so yeah this was so, so good. All right, you guys. So today I am going to be making some fish and chips. I've been wanting fish and chips for a while. So we're going to make some. I've got my fish over here falling out. I've got some flour in a bowl. And then I've got all of my ingredients here. So I've got, I don't know, about three quarters of a cup of flour in here. We're going to add some spices to this. You can add whatever kind of spices that you want. I'm going to add a little bit of paprika. And this is going to help with some color, give it a little depth of flavor. And I'm going to add some onion powder. Probably about two teaspoons. 
in some garlic powder. Probably about the same amount, two teaspoons, two and a half teaspoons, and some salt and pepper. Okay, so in here I've got some sparkling water and two teaspoons of oil, but you can do beer in the place of water. I'm just going to do water because I'm adding a little bit extra spices, and plus I don't have any beer, so I'm just going to add that in there. We're going to give this a whisk and make sure everything is nice and combined. If you need to add more water to kind of thin this out a little bit, you can. Okay, so I added a little bit more water. I want it to be thick, but still kind of runny because we're going to dust the uh, fish in some flour so that way this batter will stick better to the fish. So I'm going to cover this in plastic and I'm going to let this hang out in the fridge. You can do with 30 minutes up to two hours. I've got only 30 minutes today, so I'm just going to do 30 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the fridge. Okay, guys. So while the batter is in the refrigerator doing its thing, I went ahead and separated one egg. I've got the egg yolk here, and I added the egg white into this bowl here. And I'm just going to whip this up until soft peaks form, pop this in the refrigerator covered with some plastic wrap until we are ready to combine everything later. Okay, you guys, so I've got some potatoes on in the oven. We're going to make some chips. They're just simply seasoned potatoes baking in the oven. I've got some oil coming up to temperature on the stove, and I've got my batter here. And if it, it's hot in here, so if you hear my air conditioner, I'm sorry, it's, it's like really, really hot in here. It gets hot in the kitchen during the summer and spring. So we're just going to add our egg yolk in here. And I'm just going to break that egg yolk and mix it into this batter. And I've got my egg whites here. And I'm just going to add these egg whites into the batter. And we're going to fold these egg whites in until they are all nice and combined into that mixture. So take your time and just do this a little at a time so you don't deflate those eggs those egg whites. And this is going to help keep this batter nice and light. So once my oil comes up to temperature, all I'm going to do is get my fish. And I've got them on some paper towel here. So they dry out so the flour sticks to them a little bit better. All I'm going to do is take my fish, dip it into this unseasoned flour. You can season if you want to. I'm going to dip it in there, shake off any excess, dip it in the batter, and shake off any of the excess batter. You want a thin layer of the batter, so it's the perfect ratio of fish to batter. And then I'm just going to fry it in the pan. So once my oil comes up to temperature, we're going to get this started. All right, so my oil is up to temperature, and I'm just dipping this flour, this fish, into the flour and into the batter, letting any excess batter drip off. And I'm just going to carefully lower this down into the oil, and I'm going to let this cook about four to five minutes per side until the batter is nice and golden brown and the fish is cooked through. All right, these are nice and golden brown and I'm just gonna take these off. And I've got a sheet tray here that's got a little baking rack on top so the excess of grease can drip off. And I'm just gonna set them on that tray And while they're still hot, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. And we're going to finish up the rest.
Here is my plate, you guys. We love fish and chips. It is such an easy dinner to make. If you don't want to fry the fish, you can certainly season the fish itself and then pop it in the oven and bake it. It's absolutely delicious. Or you can grill it in some olive oil in a grill pan. So, so good. And then I just served it with some potato wedges or chips on the side and some tartar sauce. But this was so, so good. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave me a comment in the comment section down below. And all of these recipes will be linked in the description box below. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.